Digital media is a tremendous time saver. At this point in the 21st century, I'd estimate that somewhere in the neighborhood of 11 cadillion man-hours have been saved through the use of computers. But there's a downside which is so emotionally crippling that even the description of the event uses some of our harshest language. In Windows, a system crash is often called the blue screen of death. My third beginner tip bears repeating. Save, save, save. Let me just present you with a scenario. You're sitting at your desk. You're working on this painting that you see in front of you. Now, as you can see, there is layer upon layer upon layer upon layer here. You're working for hours and hours and hours, and suddenly the power goes out. And you realize you forgot to save. Well, now you just lost six or seven hours worth of work. That's time you can't get back. In illustration, who knows if you're going to be able to repeat that image, but you're up against a deadline, so now you have to sit down. Instead of spending time later that night playing video games or with your loved ones or doing working on another project, you have to spend time redoing the work that you've already done. As fantastic a program as Photoshop is, it's not immortal. It is not without its flaws. One of the things that Photoshop does not have that many modern programs have is an autosave feature. So, unfortunately, you're going to have to remember to save. There are a couple of different ways that I like to do this. The first is I've trained myself over the years that if my left hand is idle for any amount of time, I hit Control S. Control S is save. Now this image is saved. Could take a little bit. And usually if you have larger programs, you'll notice this progress bar here. So I don't do it all the time. But if I'm idle for any amount of time, if I get up to get a drink, if I get up to go to the bathroom, any reason I leave my chair, Control S before I leave. Second thing I do is I save in iterations. Now I, I touch upon this a little bit in the organized tip, if you've watched that, um, but it definitely, again, it bears repeating here because Photoshop has no autosave. We come up to the file menu here and we hit save as. You can also hit command shift or control shift S, save as. Now, one of the ways that I'll save iteratively is, for instance, we have Gar Rockwell here is the name of the main image. I just save with a triple digit number. The reason I save with a triple digit number is because yes, there have been times where I've saved over a hundred versions of a single image. The other great part about saving iteratively is that if you make any major changes down the road, you can set benchmarks for any image that I know that I'm going to majorly change, I'll set a benchmark. So it'll be Gar Rockwell BM 001 or 002, 003 whatever it may be. But I set BM so that I know that that's a benchmark. This is where a major change is, is going to take place. So this is my last save before I'm erasing a, an entire layer or redoing an entire section of the painting. Another way to do this is if you're finished with the entire project, I always like to take the last save along with any benchmarks and add the date. So in this case, it'd be 03, 02, 11. And if this were a benchmark, it'd be BM02 or whatever. The point is you put the date in there and then you don't have to go through, hover over, wait for the date to pop up or look at your properties of the image. It's right in the name, in the title, and then any benchmarks or any images that are below that, you know were worked on on the same day and you can group them all together. Once I get to the point where I have, say, 100 and I'm finished with the painting, I delete everything that's not a benchmark because at that point it's not going to be a whole lot of work to change anything because again I have all these layers if you look down over here and I still have a couple of iterations so you don't want to clutter up your hard drive with too much of the same thing all right so I'll hit cancel here because I'm not going to save that right now in terms of this type of organization you can see that I use a uniform naming code even in the videos that I'm creating for you right now we have BT these are beginner tips we have PM that's the preferences menu we have WS, which is workspace, and these quadruple X's. This is a series that I'm working on that's going to be Photoshop concepts, so I'm not exactly sure what the number is going to be, so I just filled it with X's and I know that it's there. Let's talk about the history, and I know I've mentioned this before. If we go into the history panel, then we have a series of different snapshots here. Now, these snapshots were taken by Photoshop, and they contain different versions. Essentially, these are benchmarks like we talked about. These contain different versions of your image, even though it's difficult to tell here because I didn't change it that much. So we'll go back to the original and we'll say create a new layer right here. Change the image. We'll take a new snapshot and name this purple line. So now after we save this, we open it back up 
and let's say we didn't like that purple line. We can undo and move on and make a green line. So we make a green line. In this case, again, you're not going to be scribbling on your drawing. What you're going to be doing is making hours and hours of, of changes of new painting. But now, if I were to open this back up after I saved it, I can always click on this purple line and it is always going to be there. That version of the painting is always going to be there. So that's another way to save your work. Last thing that you can do, and again, this is extreme, but sometimes hard drives crash. So if you really have some important information, make sure that you burn any work that you have that you need to save that's vital to a DVD or save it to two different hard drives. I can't emphasize enough how many times I've been asked years later to come back to a project and just make a couple of subtle changes. And fortunately, I have all of that work on DVD. I just go through my catalog, look for the name of the business that I was working for at the time and pull up that DVD, look for the specific project on the DVD, and then I'm done. If you want to be really organized, here's my little system that I use on my DVDs. I put the business name and the project title on top of the DVD, or if there are a couple of different project titles, then I'll put a few different ones just so I know basically the era in which all of the items on that DVD came from. Over here I'll put the date, and down here I'll put number X of Y. So for example, if I did a whole body of work over the course of three months for a company, it's not going to fit on one DVD. I'll put it on four or five, and this will be, say, number, I don't know, two of five. I hope all of these tips have been helpful. Again, I've learned this over my 10 years of freelance graphic design and illustration, basically the hard way. I've had computers crash, I've had power go out, I've had clients ask me for something that accidentally got deleted or a DVD is destroyed. Pretty much every way you can lose data, I've lost it. So like I said, saving may not seem that important, but if you're in a continued career of either freelance or you're working at a larger corporation or for anybody who's going to want you to revisit any of your work down the line, it is vital that you save. That's all for now. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below and send any questions that you might have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.